repentance and renewal, two words that we don't usually put together, but they are very much related. And I would like to share with you in this morning how true repentance in our lives, and if we truly understand what it means, it can bring renewal, great renewal to our lives. How can I see any progress at all in my life? We need to look at what repentance truly means. That will give us the key. We read in the gospel today, there's more joy in heaven for over one sinner who repents than for many who do not need that repentance. So we, need, we see that there's a connection in between those two things, in between the joys of heaven and our own repentance that we need to do, our own ability to repent. The Lord can only work when we open room for Him in our hearts. We all want renewal, but we need to begin with repentance. All the readings today show us that repentance is infallible. It always works. The psalm says, A humble and contrite heart, O God, you will not spurn. You will not spurn. And we read in the readings over and over and over today the repentance of Moses and God's people that brought a huge transformation. The repentance of David in the psalm. The repentance of Paul bringing him from persecutor to follower. And three stories in the gospel to exemplify the repentance of tax collectors and sinners. So the question is, do we want renewal in our lives? Do we want to change in any aspect of our life? Here's the key. True repentance. So first of all, let us look at why we don't change so much in our lives or we don't change as fast as we would like to. And we need to say that sin of any kind in our life whether it be venial or mortal, a minute sin or major, it always has the tendency to become invisible. Like that son in the parable that we read today, spending all his money, being used by others. Probably many people told him, everybody saw that he was nearly bankrupt. Everyone except him. Sin wants to become invisible before our eyes. And it actually becomes a double invisibility. We become blind to our own sin. We don't see them anymore, the things that can harm us the most. And we become blind to the graces of God, the things that can help us the most. So when we find ourselves in those situations, it seems that it's impossible to change. It's impossible to enact a real change in our lives. However, we read in the gospel today that there is hope. When everything seems lost, there's still hope. Repentance brings renewal and joy back to the heart. The son had to come to his senses. He had to remove the blindfold from his eyes. He had to see again in order to be freed and that's always what it takes for true repentance in our lives. That was the story of St. Augustine. He says that he was living his life almost as if all his faults were behind him and he would never see them. And once he heard the, the preaching and the testimony of Ponticianus, who was a, um, also an African like him, and sharing his testimony, he was inspired to change. And this is what he says. Such was the story of Ponticianus. But you, O Lord, while he was speaking, turn, towards my, turn me towards myself, taking me from behind my back, where I had placed myself while unwilling to exercise self-scrutiny. And thou set me face to face with myself, that I might behold how foul I was. 
You opposed me unto myself and thrusted me before my own eyes that I might discover my iniquity and hate it. So God helped Augustine to be able to see again those things so that he inspired a new change and transformation in his life. So repentance is an invitation to see more clearly things as they are, our own sin, but also the Father and his house. So I'd like to share with you three steps that, take, that repentance takes, the three steps of repentance that rep are represented by the son's journey in the gospel today. If you want to see any change in your life, if, if you want to, to see any transformation, any renewal in your life, we need to commit to these three things. Here they are. The first one is we need to get upset first. The first step is to get upset with our own sinfulness. Until we are truly upset, we will not leave things behind. Like that son... All of a sudden, he found himself disgusted with that situation, with the smell, with the hunger, with the humiliation. And the problem is that many times we compromise and we get so used to this way of living that we make excuses. Reasons are the things that we say before a conclusion, but excuses are the things that we say because of not following those conclusions. And so we find many excuses in our lives for not doing what we have to do, and we compromise. And that doesn't allow us to get upset with things as they are, so that we may start to see a change in our lives. We don't own up. We are not confronted enough with the things that we want changed in us. St. Paul, I think, in that second reading from today, He's a great example of that. He owns up to his own sinfulness. And he says, I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and arrogant. He says, that's, that's me. That was the first step for him to change. That was the first step that the son had to go through. To get upset with how the situation was in that moment. But the second step is to reset We need to restore in us the love for the Father and the beauty of the Father's house. The Son starts remembering the Father's house, how many of His workers had enough to eat and how happy He was in the Father's house. And He contrasts that with His current situation together with the swine. We need to remember that living in Christ is so much better Because we forget how it looks like and we become deceived. So we need to almost envision ourselves if we want to see any change. How good would it be if I became a better student, more responsible, meeting all my deadlines? How much would I, would I learn? How much better would it be if I will be better in my charity? practice charity towards others. How much better it would be if I would learn how to express myself to others instead of being short and getting angry and snapping at people. How much better would that be? And so once we envision ourselves, once we envision the Father's house, then we are moved again to change. But those are only the first two steps. Without the third one, we got nothing. We need to get upset with that current situation. We need to reset our vision towards the Father's house. But then finally, we need to set forward. We need to make a steady decision. Something small that will initiate a transformation in our lives. As I said, without this, we got nothing. I think that we don't see more renewal in our life because we don't desire things. Enough. Once they asked St. Thomas Aquinas, who, who was a genius himself, how could one improve in any area of their lives? And he said two words, will it. You need to will it. 
You need to will it more. If you will, you will improve. If you will, you will be perfect. And he said, because God is already quite ready to help us. God is quite ready to help us, but we don't will it enough. So the third step is to set ourselves forward to make a decision that will bring transformation into our lives. So to apply this to our own situation today, I want to invite each of us to practice this in our own lives. Choose one area where you want to see renewal in your life, one small thing, and apply the three steps for one week. You will be amazed, but you will see instant results. Instant results. You know, it took the son a long time to get away from the father's house. But it took him only a moment to receive his mercy, to be accepted again. Once we set ourselves towards the goal, once we get upset, once we reset ourselves on that vision, once we set ourselves forward, then it's instant, the transformation that we can see. The father is calling again. He's calling from his house. From the altar, he is calling us. So if we were inspired in any way to bring renewal to our lives in this morning, let us begin with true repentance.